Uh, welcome back. You are looking at the scenes as Democratic presidential candidate Senator Bernie Sanders was confronted over the weekend at a rally in Seattle by protesters from the city's Black Lives Matter chapter. Seconds after Sanders took to the stage, a dozen protesters jumped barricades and grabbed the microphone from the senator. To booze from the crowd, Marissa Johnson, co-founder of Black Lives Matter Seattle, demanded that the senator take action on saving black lives and called on him to release his plans to reform policing. She also demanded and eventually won a four and a half minute long moment of silence in honor of Michael Brown. And Marissa Johnson joins us now live. Marissa, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Tamara. Okay, so let's first clarify some things here because I've been inundated with tweets that say you're not actually part of the Black Lives Matters movement. There have been others who actually have said, and again, who knows if people are anonymous or not? Uh, they are anonymous, but we don't know if they're real or not. Who say that you're actually a supporter of Sarah Palin? Even. All of these conspiracy theories about who you are and why you were on that stage from that you were plant from Palin to that you're not a part of the Black Lives Movement. Who are you? Yeah, my name is Marissa Johnson, and um, I grew up with Tea Party parents, and I no longer believe that anymore. A lot of people have progressed in this moment, and where black people are, where all of us are being radicalized um, and changing our views on a lot of things. But I think it's really interesting to note that no one is really engaging with the content of what I said on the stage. I read out a lot of claims about Seattle and Seattle's racism and our national racism, and yet people are trying to go after my personal character and just derail and derail and derail. And that sig signals to me that the things that I said were spot on. Yeah. And as far as uh, Black Lives Matter, I am with the Black Lives Matter network, um, the national network, but it actually doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. Um, people don't need to be with an organization. People don't need to be credentialed to be able to say the truth. Black people are in a state of emergency. And so the question is, is what I said true? Or is it not? Because everything else is just derailment. And, and perhaps some of the derailment, as you describe, was part, uh, partly because of the, the tactic that was used um, as it relates to Senator Bernie Sanders. Let me play first what he said after he was interrupted. Let's play it. It's unfortunate because, among other things, among other things, I wanted to talk about the issue of black lives, of the fact that the American people are tired of seeing unarmed uh, African Americans shot and killed. But there are other issues as well that we have to talk about. So here you have Bernie Sanders saying, "I was prepared to talk about." the Black Lives Matters crisis and the things that he would like to see change, but he was not given that opportunity. Bernie Sanders had several weeks to actually address Black Lives Matter, and I'm actually not concerned with talk as much as I am concrete platforms, concrete policies, and these politicians need to show us what's up. When Bernie Sanders was first confronted at Netroots, O'Malley said very specifically, I'm going to put out a criminal justice reform package, and you should expect every other candidate to do the same. So Bernie Sanders had the opportunity to do that and did not, so he lost his platform. So Bernie Sanders, after this uh, incident, uh, addressed this with new sweeping policy platform, he says, to combat um, racial inequality. He points out a number of things, is to reinvent how police in America operate and package his criminal justice plan with ones that preserve voting rights and protect against racial violence. And he went on to list a number of other things, which include the wearing of body cameras, which a number of the Black Lives Matter protesters have also pointed out were necessary, especially after uh, Mike Brown. With that said, I guess a lot of people are wondering, Every politician deserves to be scrutinized, whether they are a liberal or a conservative. But there seems to be uh, far more, um, far more politicians, let's say, in the far right, who are less than sympathetic to your cause than at Bernie Sanders. Why attack Bernie Sanders in that way? Why not meet with Bernie Sanders? Why not attempt to find a common ground with someone who seems to be more willing to support a progressive? agenda as it relates to focusing in on black lives. Absolutely. There's really no point in confronting um, the GOP, at least I think during the primaries, because GOP members will pretty much flatly tell you that they don't care about black lives. So instead, we really need to put pressure on people who claim that they care about black lives, claim that they're closer. And what we saw actually with the first confrontation that Bernie Sanders had at Netroots was that he was confronted, O'Malley was confronted, and even Hillary's camp had to respond. And here, the thing is, is that uh, especially on the left, candidates 
have this liberal rhetoric and we really need them to match it with their words and with their actions. Um, so it's, the thing is, is if Bernie Sanders is really grassroots and he's really there for the people, then he would make room for grassroots movements and not and not say to the grassroots movements, you need to settle with what I give you. And if you look at Bernie Sanders' platform, you look at what he said on racial equality, he's basically a class reductionist. He's never really had a strong analysis that there is racism and white supremacy that is separate than the than the economic things that everyone experiences. So, so, so with we want to continue to push him on that. So let me ask you, what candidate then do you support? What candidate speaks most to the changes you and your organization uh, feel are necessary at this point? I personally don't support any of the candidates. Um, and I think it's a false narrative to say that you just have to settle for what the system has given us. We've said, no matter what your politics are, across the board, Americans have said continually, continually, look, our politicians don't work for us, our Congress doesn't work for us, the system we're in doesn't work for us. So I don't affirm any part of the system because I don't expect any politicians to do work. Instead, I'm really interested in getting more Americans to continue to question, why do we settle for a system that we say doesn't work for us when our lives are literally on the Line. So I think every politician needs to needs to show up, needs to show their platform, and no politician should feel safe from the criticism of Black Lives Matter. And just quickly, one of the co-founders of Black Lives Matter movement, Progress Colors, issued a statement to us just a few minutes ago, and it says that um, Black Lives Matter is not targeting Bernie Sanders or any particular candidate. Black Lives Matter is pushing and engaging presidential candidates and elected officials to consider the role of the state in perpetuating anti-black racist practices. Um, so that is the statement we just got in from them. We appreciate you joining us. I think this is like your first TV interview uh, since this happened. So uh, we appreciate it and we hope to continue the conversation. Thank you very much, Marissa. We'll be right back. Thank you, Tamara. Hey, YouTube fans. I'm Luke Russer. Thanks for checking out our MSNBC channel. Subscribe by clicking right here and click any of the videos over here to watch the latest breaking news, mini documentaries, conversations from Shift, and other digital exclusives. Check it out.